Welcome to this week's Life on Board Amy Jo, where I get to grips with the weed hatch. And Chris has a unique way of painting the gunnels. And of course Smudge brings the editing of the vlog to a grinding halt. Yeah, so having uh, got down through the locks with all the weed that you saw on the bow camera, uh, we've got something around the prop definitely, so I'm going to go down now and see what I can pull off. Oh, what a collection! <laughs> I see a carrier bag. A big carrier bag. Whether well, I can reach it though is another matter. You might need your dibbler. <laughs> On your dibbler? No, I've got it. The trouble is it's... It's wrapped around with the weed. No. <laughs> One of those industrial bags. And this is what I'm pulling out. <clears throat> I think that's got it all off now. Not the haul I was expecting to get, but nonetheless, it's it's cleared. I think. God, there's so much light over there. Yeah, can't see anything else on there. But for those of you that say you should put gloves on, yes but the water's clear enough to see what's down there. So, and I always wash my hands afterwards. So that's the haul we got off of the uh, prop, not what we expected, but there you go. It's just an industrial bag of some sort big heavy plastic. It's a wedging, wedging under the door. So, I'll sit them. So next job is put this back together. Despite her young age of 10 years, Amy Jo is quite a simple little boat. She's got no fancy weed hatches, no fancy uh, stern glands or anything like that. It's just traditional old style weed hatch and uh, stern gland. It just works. <laughs> it's never failed me yet. Last check.
no leaks, all done, all good. So today we leave our mooring at the National Waterways Museum, which is at the head of the Shropshire Union Canal. We head back down what's known or was known as the Chester Canal, it's now the Shropshire Union Canal, and retrace our steps back to Chester.
Upon our arrival at Chester Basin, we found our original mooring spot opposite the dry dock was still free. So we pulled on there and we had spent a week on here. Over the last few days I've been catching up on the paintwork on this side of Amy Joe, and uh, I've got primer and undercoated on on the cabin sides and today I've just rubbed down the gunnels ready for painting so uh, she looks a bit poorly as you can tell <laughs> on this side but we're getting there now for a well-earned paint Having spent around about four weeks in and around Chester and Ellesmere Pool, it's time to leave. We need to move on. We've uh, already outstayed our allotted time we're allowed, thanks to Chris's hospital. So now we're moving on and heading back down the Shropshire Union and the first lock, Hall Lane Lock, is against us, so Chris has gone to set that. We're back on the A55 bridge again, only this time facing the other way we've come out of uh, Chester so now we're tackling the port side or left side of the boat as you'll recall I did the starboard side a couple of weeks ago so now it's the turn of the port side I'd already pre-rubbed down the gunnels so this afternoon we've just primed them where the bare spots were and now I'm just masking up ready to paint and then Chris is going to give me a hand I'm going to roll it on and Chris is going to lay it off for me, which means just slightly going over it lightly with a brush to smooth any um, bits out so it dries to a nice flat finish. You might be asking, but a nice sunny daylight today, why are you under a bridge? You should be out in the sun. Well, that doesn't work either because the steel gets too hot and black absorbs heat, as you probably know and it'd be too hot to paint so under the bridge here we're in the shade it's a nice 24 degrees here it's perfect for painting and uh, it also means i can get on with a few blotches on this side of the cabin as well get them sorted so chris and i have been beavering away we've uh, finally got the gun all painted excuse the shaky camera but uh Sweat is running off the pair of us now. It's literally dripping off my chin at the moment as I speak. But there we go, the jobs are good. And just let the paint go off a bit and then I'll start taking the, ins the uh, masking tape off. And then all we've got is the cabin sides left to do. In order to get the front bit done, as you can see underneath the, uh, the yachts, Chris, does it in such a laid back way? Yeah, just have to lay down on the job, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the rust spots treated on the roof now. They've come up a bit better on this side because I've rubbed them down a bit more, having had a bit more time. So the finish is much better on this side. autumn is upon us one of the jobs I'd like to tackle before the winter and we have to light or wake up the Hobbit is to give it a nice lick of paint it's one of the nice things about why we chose this particular fire is because the Hobbit fires are color coded and you can buy the paint um, cow fire stove paint and every year I can rub it down and give it a coat of paint so that's the sky blue for the main part and out here in the cracks drying off are the graphite grey parts with namely the doors and the back fire shield 
So now they're all ready to be reassembled. This year I managed to get the fire shield off at the back of the fire so I can have a good look at this cereal plate. That gives you the information on our little fire. For a four kilowatt fire, it then I've poked the heat out. So that's our plate in position in the back. We paid extra for this little chrome fiddle rail, thinking it would keep anything on the top, like a kettle or a saucepan. But if I put my hand nearby, you'll see that you can just about get a cup of soup on there if you're lucky. So it was a bit of a waste of money really, but never mind. And here we go, the finished job. The doors have been, both been repainted, the shell's been repainted, and the fire looks as good as new. Job done. Well, I'm trying to edit next week's vlog, but a certain person has other ideas. <laughs> I can't see the screen and he refuses to budge. I think he's trying to tell me something. I've had to give up editing because a certain young man wants to play. He keeps bringing me toys and landing them in my lap. So the vlogging is going to have to wait while I play with Smudge for a bit. Well, having spent a week moored up here at uh, the Cheshire Cat at Cresselton, we're now starting our final cruise to Tatton Hall Marina because it's the wedding on Saturday, day after tomorrow. We're leaving Amy Jo in the marina for, a, for the weekend while we go to the hotel where the wedding's taking place. And uh, for those of you that would be interested, I will be taking a couple of little videos and pictures, won't be much, and we'll post them on another vlog. So enjoy the cruise today, folks. Not gonna be far, I'm not gonna do much filming. You've seen this stretch time and time again. So do enjoy. I found out yesterday that this building is uh, McCormick Architects. They bought the site um, to redevelop it and they've got planning permission now for five canal side properties and one bungalow. And they've been meaning to get on with it for years, but they've just been too busy. So now they're getting ready to relocate the business into um, Chester Town and they'll start the demolition process very soon, I should think. But this was what was Dean's Marine Holiday Cruisers. It was one of the first hire boat fleets on the canal network. Those of you that have followed us into Chester, you'll recall some old boats in uh, Taylor's Boatyard. Well, they are uh, the old hire cruisers from this location. I'm on my own today, single-handing the boat. Um, there's no locks. So it's just a nice steady cruise down to Tatton Hall. Past our favourite houses on the canal. Love these properties. I think we filmed them on the way up here. So if you want to look at some of our previous vlogs, you'll see these properties again. Well, that's it for this week, folks. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. As promised, here are a few photographs from our daughter Amy's wedding. I hope you enjoy them. People have been asking for them, so thank you very much for that. So all that's left to say is stay safe, stay well. A big thank you to our members and Patreons and those of you who bought us a coffee. And we'll see you next week on Life On Board Amy Jo. Bye for now. but me being me couldn't help but inject a little bit of humour into the wedding ceremony. May I now ask Steve to place Amy's hand into Matthew's. Do you now as father of the bride entrust the safekeeping of Amy to Matthew? <laughs> 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 you did have to think about it. <laughs> That's wonderful Steve, thank you so much. You may take your seat. Thank you.